Thomas Chisholm was born in 1866 in a simple log cabin in Franklin, Kentucky. And despite having no high school or college education, he became a teacher at age 16 in the small schoolhouse where he himself had learned to read. At age 36, he was ordained a Methodist minister, but Chisholm was one of those frail, sickly people who suffer ill health all of their lives, and after only a year, he had to leave the ministry. He made a meager living selling insurance in New Jersey until, at age 87, he entered the Methodist Home for the Aged in Oak Grove, New Jersey. One thing Chisholm was very good at was writing poetry. During his lifetime, he wrote more than 1,200 poems. When he was 57 years old, he sent some of his poems to good friend William Runyon, a musician associated with the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago, Illinois. As Runyon was leafing through the poems, one caught his eye. Later, Runyon recalled that he had prayed most earnestly that his music might carry over the poem's message in a worthy manner. Coupled with Runyon's music, Chisholm's words became the favorite song of Dr. Will Houghton, president of the Moody Bible Institute at the time. And Dr. Houghton invited an unknown singer at the time by the name of George Beverly Shea, to sing it on the Institute's weekly radio broadcasts. Meanwhile, many miles away, a student at Wheaton College who listened to those broadcasts became familiar with both Shea and with the new song. That young student asked Shea to be a part of his new evangelism crusade, where the song was a favorite everywhere the crusade traveled. Yes, that young student was Billy Graham. And I think Runyon's prayer was faithfully answered because in the Methodist hymnal today, it is second only in popularity to In the Garden. But you don't have to be a Methodist to know of the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And now you know the rest of the story. Shadow of turning 
Christ.